I had just accepted that maybe I wouldn't be in the hot seat today. <laughs> I had just accepted it, and here I am. So you let go of a desire that was working against you. Did you hear that? Yeah. Did you hear that? Yeah. Relationship friend? <laughs> she let go of a... Say it again. I let go of a desire that was hindering me. Huh. Just let go. I just accepted that I'm not going to be in the hot seat. She started to believe that she wasn't going to be in the hot seat. So it was working against us. She was invisible to us. We could not find her. Yeah. And then when she let go of the contradictory vibration, there she was. <laughs> in fact, we had to choose you. There were others around you who we had to beat with a stick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I made it. So. Yeah. I have to tell you a story and then I have a question. The story is just to attest to how powerful this is, this law of attraction. I'm an actor, so I work in the theater and I was backstage one night and I was feeling a little down. And I listened to one of your recordings and you told a girl that in order for the love of her life to come in, all she had to do was just think about blue glass and butterflies. And I was thinking, well, what is my blue glass? Like, what would that mean for me? And it wasn't even a second after I thought that, I looked up and I was surrounded by blue light bulbs. They were all turned off, so they weren't even calling out to me, you know? It wasn't like I was showered in blue light. It's just they were right there. So, yeah. that, yeah. Well, the universe is abundant with evidence of your power. And in any moment that you stop working against your own power, then the universe says, here you go, here you go, here you go, here you go, here you go. Yeah. Isn't that nice? Yeah, it is. Yeah. I found you in March and my life has done a complete 180. I have a job that I love. I got an agent. All of these things that mattered very much to me started manifesting. My issue is this. Because, and let's talk about why before we start. Before I, before I put all the rocks on the trail. <laughs> and the reason for that is because your vortex had all of these things in it already, all gestated already for you. And something that you began hearing as you began listening to us caused you to be in the receptive mode where you began letting more of those things in. That's all that it was. Mm -hmm. So you can do that with anything. But issues are harder, aren't they? Yeah. Because something in me thinks that certain issues are bigger than blue light bulbs. But here's the question that we have for you before you get into it. So these things that began happening... Are you saying you weren't worried about them? You weren't working against them? I just decided to chill out. So you were before. I was thinking very hard about agents, relationships, money job that I like, fulfillment. So you decided to chill out and you just did that again. I just did it right Sitting there. there. You just said, I've just decided <laughs> just to accept that it's probably not going to happen and I'm not going to die. It's okay. That's the, exactly what I, I thought. You know what? I'll be okay because I'm getting a lot of wisdom and it's, it's happening anyway. So what is the issue and how can you apply the same thing to that? Go off and think about it on your own. No. <laughs> I have a... <laughs> there is a co-creator in my life who has really taught me about unconditional love. Like, I've really had to learn that because of this. And so are you in the same position that our friend is, that it's so up close that you just can't ignore it? I think a little bit. This is what happens every time... Is that I... person under your chair? <laughs> pretty much, pretty much, very, very close. Every time I come into alignment, this person comes into my life and we have this beautiful season together of just bliss and playing with each other. Exactly what you were describing where just the best of yourself comes out and plays with the other person and you, you don't really need anything from them other than just you're creating together. So that's happened like three times and then something happens where one of us gets scared or one of us wants to, you know, I like you so much, I need to nail you down. Like I need to like, let's make this something. And it just, it, it gets rickety. It gets rickety because it's so charged. So does it feel to you that you are the nailer downer or is the other? The first time I think it was them. It's been both of us, but lately it's been me and I actually... Let's clarify this. So it goes along and it goes really good and then I do this thing that doesn't work and then it doesn't go good. So Abraham, I need your advice. 
What was the last thing you so, said? So, Abraham, I need your advice. So okay. it goes along. It goes really good. Oh, so good. And then I do this thing that always ruins it. So, Abraham, I need your advice. And we say, just don't do that thing that ruins it. <laughs> and you even told us what it was. You told us exactly what it was. And it's the thing you didn't do in the chair just now. You almost did it. And then you stop doing it because you know it doesn't work. So you stop doing it. So you stop doing it relative to an agent. You stop doing it relative to that. You stop doing it relative to that. You know how to stop doing it. Mm. Mm. Why don't you stop doing it relative to this? In my mind, it's bigger. I want it. I actually want this more than I want, even want. Wait, you want that more than being in the hot seat with us? Oh. <laughs> We're just having fun with you. I want it more. I want it more. <laughs> therefore, I need to pay a bigger price for it. That's and that I am oh, know that that's let's not stay true. Stay there for a minute. Okay. It shouldn't be that easy. I want it so much. I must pay a bigger price mm, for it. That's bad. Story. Only good things come through big prices. That's isn't what you believe, it? isn't it? Yeah. I have to pay a bigger price. Right. I have to pay a bigger price. Words don't teach, life experience teaches. So has life experience really taught you that if you pay a big price for something, that it turns out good? Can you give us any examples of no, that? No, no, Everything that has happened for me has been just like what just happened right now. Alignment and then. And so how do you think it is that people come to believe that they must pay a bigger price? So just rest with that question. How is it that I have come to believe that I must pay a bigger price? So just think for a minute and then think about where you heard that from. You heard that from those who needed you to do stuff. You heard that from those who said, Hey, the world doesn't revolve around you, even though it does. Who said to you, hey, it's not supposed to come easy. You're supposed to have to do all of these things. When I was your age, I had to do this and this and this. And I walked 10 miles both ways in the snow. And we didn't have cars and we didn't have Twitter and we didn't have... We're exaggerating from the olden days. Yeah, you sound like my dad. You sound just like my dad. So. But what we're getting at is we're just asking you full out from what you've lived and what you know and what you've seen work in your own life because that's the only thing that counts you can't take anybody else's word for anything because words don't teach it's only your own life experience that teaches tell us do you have to pay a big price or not you don't and so it's easier to let go of that so here's a question should I have to pay a bigger price for things that I really want than for things that I don't want as much we're asking all of you and why is that in this vibrational world? Because it's not about paying a price. It's about lining up with it. So here's the next question. Is it harder for me to think pure thoughts about big things than it is small things? Yeah, it is harder. But why? Why is it harder to think pure thoughts about big things than about small things? wanting it more you'd think that it would be easier why is it harder to think pure thoughts about things that I really want than about smaller things there's more resistance the more that you want it there's more resistance in the things that I really want because I've thought about them longer because that's why we're trying to get everybody to set aside to focus on something else rather than the issue and the issue will diffuse itself because the issue will not keep its negative beliefs alive without you the issue cannot keep its negative beliefs alive without your attention to the issue and if you take your attention off the issue those negative beliefs will peter out they will dissipate they will become non players in your vibrational symphony do you like that we came a long way with that. That's really, really good. It's as easy to create a castle as a button. Here we have a really good question for you. You're going to really like this. Which has more resistance? Something that I sort of want and I don't have any negative belief about it. Or something that I really, 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 really want and I have a lot of negative belief about it. Which has more resistance? It's obvious. But here's an even better question. Which is more powerful? <laughs> which is more powerful something I really 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 want that I have a lot of resistance about or something that I sort of want that I have no resistance which is more powerful it's more powerful to want it barely with no resistance than to really want it with all kinds of resistance how about that doesn't it make you want to just stop trying so hard 
Take the effort factor out of it and things will start happening for you. You think there's more power in the struggle and the trying and maybe you've parlayed your desire into a stronger place. But when you've got a desire that you are countering equally, you have no power. But when you sort of want it and you're not countering it at all, powerful and ready to gain more power. And oh, when something pure, meaning not contradicted by belief, when something that you want, you just want it and you allow the momentum on that to build, then magic happens in your experience or what others think is magic. Did we get there for you? Yes, but I have one more question just to zone, hone in on it a little bit more. With this particular person, since I come into alignment and then he comes right into my life, it leads me to believe that that is... It leads you to believe that he's in alignment. It does. Yeah, it does. And that's why I love being around him. And Everything so? Clears when, and so, and so. Give him to her. I don't know. Oh, hell no. Hell no. <laughs> so say that again. So, so I'm in alignment. I'm in alignment. And he comes right I in. I don't try. And this person that I adore, and I have decided to adore, regardless of if he's in my direct experience for the rest of my life, whatever distance, it's okay. I adore him, and I just want him to be happy. But I don't try. I just get into alignment and it comes right in there. And then I get afraid because I think of societal rules about relationships and, well, maybe we should do this because that's what it looks like when people are like this. And then he's like, whoa. And then we have to lovingly go our separate ways. And so what my question is, do, I know there are thousands. We want to say this to you. Okay. You get to want what you want. You get in alignment, he comes, you want him to stay, you want him to commit, you want him to do whatever it is. And so you get to want what you want, but you can't contradict what you want by the condition making you not believe it. If you can continue to want what you want and not let the condition convince you that what you want isn't happening right now, then the thing that isn't happening can begin to happen. That was a really big statement. Did you hear it? Mm -hmm. You get so. to want what you want, but when the situation that's happening keeps you from believing what you want, then that's what goes wrong with it. I don't want to press it because I respect what he wants as well. And I've also heard you say you can't don't pull someone else into the vortex don't work too hard to pull someone else in with you you know if they want something else let them but i do want him i do want him you're just gonna really like this so much okay <laughs> sometimes and this is what's happening here by insisting on what you want before another is ready and you try to pull them into the vortex you're not pulling him into his vortex you're pulling him out of his vortex now, you really can't pull him in or out. So that's why you have to leave him out of the equation. You have to want what you want and believe what you want and allow what you want and what you want will come and most likely through him. But when you try to make it be this way right here, right now, before somebody else is ready, the backlash happens. Here's why. Imagine since everything is vibrational and the easiest way for you to understand vibrations in your world is to think about sound or electricity. That's a really good way. So think about electricity and think about an open circuit and think about you being tuned in, tapped in, turned on. You've got all of this energy flowing through you and you are flowing it toward this desire. Let's say in this case, toward this specific person, this desire about this person and you're flowing it. But let's say that for whatever reason, that person isn't in complete agreement with what you're doing. Now, the tendency would be to say, okay, then that person has closed their circuit because he wants something different. So his circuit is closed while mine is open and so I'm getting electrocuted. <laughs> but what's really happening, since his circuit doesn't have anything to do with your electrocution ever, only your own circuit, so you're flowing, 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 but then his behavior or his condition causes you to think thoughts that close your own circuit. So it's not what he's doing, it's what you're thinking about what he's doing that causes you to close your circuit. And that's what is electrocuting you. And then because you don't feel good, then it feels like it's wrong. And it's not wrong because of the behavior and it's not wrong because of the person and it's not wrong because of the decisions of the person. It only feels like it's wrong because you're closing your own circuit with a belief that doesn't match your desire. And when you sat in that chair, you didn't do that.